Hi friend, welcome to week one of the Potholders Galore Crochet Along. In this video, we are going to learn how to crochet the Fairy Dust Potholder, which is a double thick potholder that uses the half double crochet stitch to create tons of texture. It is seamed along the back, along the diagonal, and you can hardly see where the join is at the end of each round. Let's get started. We are going to start with a slip knot and place it on our hook. Now tighten it up. We are going to chain 40, but if you'd like to customize the size of your pot holder, there are instructions included in the written pattern linked below. Into the second chain from the hook, we are going to make two half double crochets. Now turn your chain towards you and we're going to look into the back bump. So insert your hook into that back bump and make a half double crochet stitch. You know that you've done this right if you can see the front and back loop of the chain below your stitch. Into the next chain we're going to work it normally, so going into that top loop and we're going to make a half double crochet stitch. The next chain, we're going to turn our chain and work into that back bump and make a half double crochet. And we are going to repeat this all the way across, alternating between working the half double crochets normally into that top loop and then working them into the back bump of the next chain. When there is only one chain remaining, we are going to make three half double crochets into that last chain and this makes our edge or corner. Now we're going to rotate our work counterclockwise so that we are working along the bottom of our chain and we're going to go into the next chain. So as you guys can see, there's a front and back loop of our chain and we're going to work into that back loop and make a half double crochet. Into the next chain, we are going to go under both the front and the back loops of the chain and we're going to make a half double crochet. And we're going to alternate between doing that. So into the next chain, we're going to just go into that back loop, so the furthest away from you. And into the next chain, we're going to go under both loops. And you guys are going to do that all the way across. This alternating technique makes a cool texture where you can see that front loop appear. And this is done so that round one matches the remaining rounds and it doesn't stand out. We've arrived at the first chain of round one, so what we're going to do is insert our hook into the chain, make one half double crochet stitch, and this completes the corner. Make sure to mark it with a stitch marker so you don't lose your place, and then to join the round, we're going to insert our hook into the back loop of the first half double crochet and make a slip stitch. To start round two, we're not going to make a chain one, but instead we are going to work a half double crochet into both the front and back loops. Into the next stitch, we are going to work into just the back loop, so the back loop is the furthest from you. Insert your hook and make a half double crochet. Into the next stitch, we're going to work into just the front loop, so the closest loop to you. Now we're going to alternate between working into the back loop and working the next stitch into the front loop. If you've done these stitches correctly, you should be able to see the front loop when you've worked into the back loop, and if you've worked into the front loop, you shouldn't see the back loop at all. All 
Alright you guys, when you get to the first corner, you're just going to work everything normally. So we're going to work into the back loop and into the front loop, making sure that we only make one half double crochet into every stitch. And it's going to start to curl up and eventually make kind of like a pouch. When you get to the stitch marker, which is the last stitch of the round, remove it and we are going to make a half double crochet into the back loop only and remark it with our stitch marker. Now to join the round, we are going to insert our hook into the first stitch of the round and work a slip stitch into just the back loop only. Just like in round two, we're not going to chain one, but instead we're going to work a half double crochet into both the front and back loops of the first stitch. So into the next stitch, we are going to work into the front loop only, and then into the next stitch into the back loop only. So we are going to repeat this all the way around, working into the front loop and then into the back loop and making a half double crochet in each stitch around. At the end of round three, when we get to the stitch marker, we're going to remove it and we are going to work a half double crochet into the front loop only and mark it with our stitch marker so we don't lose our place. Now to join, we are going to insert our hook into the back loop only of the first half double crochet and make a slip stitch. At the end of round 13, we are going to remove our stitch marker and we're going to make one final half double crochet into the front loop only. Then we're going to make a slip stitch going into both the front and the back loop. Chain one and pull it up to make a tail of about 12 inches, trim it, and then tighten it up to secure it. Inside the pot holder, you guys are going to see one tail and so we're going to thread our yarn needle and weave it through a stitch and secure it with a knot, then weave it through a few more stitches and when you're happy with it, give it a trim. Before folding, make sure your corners are all nice and flat and that your work looks like a pouch. Then grab hold of the two sides and push them down into the center so they meet on a diagonal and form a square or rectangle. Thread the yarn needle with the long seaming tail and insert it into two of the matching front loops and pull it through. And repeat this across. Insert the needle into one of the front loops, then the other, and pull it tight. The tighter that you pull this, the better because it creates a less noticeable seam. Alright guys, the left side of our pot holder is now seamed, so what we're going to do is insert our needle into the corner and feed it through the inside of the pot holder. This creates a nice rounded corner and it allows us to use the same tail to weave the other side of the pot holder closed. Grab the needle with your hand and pull it through to the other side. Now we are going to continue whip stitching. So insert your hook into the front loops only and whip stitch across making sure to pull it tight. We've now seamed the other side so insert the needle into the corner and feed it through the inside of the pot holder to create that rounded corner. Secure it with a knot and weave it through a few more stitches before trimming the tail. Gently stretch out and straighten your pot holder to shape it into a square. The last step is adding a chain circle so that we can hang our pot holders. Make sure that the right side of the pot holder is facing you and you can't see the seam. Insert your hook into the top left corner and draw up a loop. Now we are going to chain 13 
and insert your hook into that same space that you started your chain and make a slip stitch. This creates a chain circle. Now we're gonna fasten off by pulling up that loop and making a tail. The last step is to weave in those last two tails to secure our chain circle and we are done. Congratulations, you just made your first fairy dust pot holder. I hope that it gets lots of use in your house. Please let me know what you guys thought in the comments down below and I will see you next Monday with a new pot holder pattern. I hope you have a wonderful week. Bye.